Good morning everyone, it's Yvonne here to do your What's Cracking reading. I was just thinking how hot it is today considering how cold it's been the last couple of weeks so um, we're definitely going into summer now. First off, thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. You know how much I am grateful for all of you for your support, your beautiful and kind words. Um, I don't really think I've got a whole lot to say. I am still doing personal readings. People are emailing me and asking me if I'm because I'm not on so often, but I am still maintaining um, my personal readings. Um, so if you do want a reading with me, you can book via www.theaussiegoddess.com. Um, and if you're overseas, remember, or even in a different state where you do not have daylight saving, remember <laughs> because we've slipped up a few times both me and people booking so um, make sure you've got the right time um, i always use the world clock uh, the world clock and you look under uh, time zones conversion very very easy to use you put in your place my place and it gives you what time um what else is there we're going to use the gilded tarot for your reading today I actually don't think there's anything else. You know, Christmas break coming up. I will be having a few days off at Christmas, um, mainly on the first. So I think from the 22nd I'm off until um, the Wednesday after Christmas. I can't really count what date that would be. Probably 25th, 26th, 27th, probably around about the 27th. So um if you want a reading though, let me know and I will book you in so that you don't miss out. Alrighty, I know it's a funny thing with Christmas, but I actually get really busy at Christmas. So it's um, unusual the times, I, I can't, there's no predictions. <laughs> Alrighty, let's get into this reading. Oh, just watch for scammers too. They're out on the loose again. I noticed them all beautifully commenting with very uh, normal pictures. They've obviously taken them from somebody else um, on my Facebook page saying, oh, I picked this up with you. Um, no good can ever come from a scammer riding off the back of someone else. No good, I can tell you now. So if somebody tries to pick you up because you're on my page, scammer. All right. Oh, the Emperor's straight out of the gate. You know, some cards are incredibly powerful when they come straight out, and the Empress is one of those cards. Um, it does talk about being fertile, so if you're, you know, in at the moment, just be really careful. If you don't want to have a baby, if you do want to have a baby, go for it. Um, really auspicious time for um, creating something new if you're going into a new business um, or you've got an idea for a business, great time to do that. She represents the divine feminine. So the divine feminine, all of us, uh, just sometimes we don't channel that quite so well as other times. But um, this is a feeling of confidence, of um, sort of really feeling comfortable in your own skin. I, I, I want to say when I'm really in my most powerful energy, I feel connected to all things. So I feel connected to nature, I feel connected to people, I feel connected to my environment. And that's what I feel like the Empress represents for me personally. Um, when she comes out, sometimes this can mean that you're glowing you are shining from inside. This is high vibration energy. Um, people seem to notice you more. Um, it could be that you're ready to have a relationship and birth something new with someone else. Could be that someone has just piqued your interest. But whatever it is, the Empress tells me that you're in a really good place here. All right, so you've left something behind. Now, sometimes when we walk away from things, it may be a physical thing, like we might have moved away from a job, a person, a situation, whatever. But sometimes this is just moving away from a, a kind of thinking or a way of being. You know, for example, if you felt really low, if you've had to try and get on top of something, if you've really struggled with something, it could be that you're finally feeling like you've got there. 
and that you're leaving things behind. But like I always say with the Six of Swords, you know what lessons you need to take from this experience. So that makes you even more powerful because you've really used the experience to your advantage here. All right, so there was some sort of anxiety or some sort of trouble. I'll just have a look. Oh, wow. All right, look at all the swords. Probably in relation to a Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo person, but not necessarily. Um, could be a partner figure or a maybe a mother figure here. Um, it could be a friend, but it's somebody here who's created some sort of energy within you, which I think could have been seen as distrust. All right. So for me, with all those swords there, I would say you could have had words with this person. You could have, um, you could have had a lot of thinking about them. You could have been really in your head about something. You know, sometimes when somebody does something to us and we trust them, and I think this happens even when you're a child, you know, if, a, if, a, if an adult tells you something that doesn't feel true or that you're not really sure it's true and, you, and you're too embarrassed to ask somebody else, this is how people prey on children. If somebody says something to you and you're not really sure about it, but you feel embarrassed to ask somebody else, and maybe you're at that, you know, time in your life where you've trusted someone for a really long time and they've told you something. And, you know, a lot of people will go away and act on that. We see it a lot in younger children. You know, you, they, they'll tell you that this person told them this, so therefore this is true. And I think, you know, it's up to us to, to not listen to other people's gossip without listening. I guess I almost want to say one ear to the ground. That's what spirit's sort of saying, one ear to the ground. Um, in other words, don't always take what you hear as gospel without looking into it. This is how rumours spread, gossip spreads, racism, discrimination, spitefulness, meanness, whatever. It's how it all spreads because what we do is we take it on board, we digest it, we either get sad or angry or whatever it does to us. And then we might create more problems by telling other people without actually va validating our story first. And I see this sometimes, I actually think people have got a little better at it. Um, but sometimes I'd see things on my Facebook and I think, how on earth could you believe that? Um, you know, some of the things to really incite racism have been really awful saying things about people. So. I want to say to you here, I feel like somebody's saying something here or has upset you by saying something. And it may be somebody that you trust a lot. And for some unknown reason, I guess, again, you know, if it was your mother or, or somebody you really love telling you, you might be inclined to believe it rather than to investigate. And sometimes people will act off that information rather than looking into where has that come from? Is there any truth to that? Any validity, you know, without without taking action? Because very often there is not, or it's been taken out of context. I see that too, taken out of context. context. And I say to people, have you spoken to that person about it? And they'll say no. And I say, why not? Oh, I'm embarrassed or, you know, I'm scared of their reaction or whatever else. You have every right to ask someone if they've said something, every right. And if you're scared or worried, find a way that's comfortable for you, but don't let it fester within you and create an issue. I don't think you're doing that here. I think that you're seeing it and you're taking it on board and you're making a decision on which way to go and I feel like you're leaving somebody behind here. So maybe it's not the first time they've, they've disrupted something within you through jealousy or spitefulness. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't expecting the Three of Swords, which is quite interesting. Um, I feel like here, maybe some of you, and I don't feel like it's everybody, but maybe some of you have been dealing with somebody that you didn't know was in another relationship or in a marriage. Um, I also feel here, you know, with that three of swords, to me, it's always the pain in the heart with those swords. So for me, this is definitely some sort of pain you're now carrying around as a result of this. Only way to discharge this pain is by asking the questions. Did you say that? Can we talk about it? Is there some issue you have with me? 
can we work out how to move forward on this and if you did say that why did you say it and what can I what can I do to put that right if it's not correct so if somebody's spending rumors around or talking about you behind your back you have every right that they're talking to, about you but remember at the end of the day it's only their opinion or their idea you don't have to really pay attention to it. You don't really have to give it airtime. But if you feel you need to ask those questions, you have every right to ask. All right, so we have the Ten of Pentacles coming out after that with the Hermit card. What a mix! And the Five of Swords. Whoever I'm speaking to here, you make me feel like you're all over the place. You know, sometimes this can happen at work because there's there may be money involved here. So sometimes people will do that to you at work. Sometimes people will take credit for your ideas at work or credit for your work at work. But I feel like here, because you've got the Hermit and the Five of Swords, you're strongly contemplating leaving somebody behind. Now, again, this could be a family member or even a friend. You know, some of the best friends I've had in my lifetime have really let me down. So it's not like people won't do that. There's jealousy. There's, you know, people get really put out if you're achieving something and they're not, whatever level it is. And they can be quite mean about it. So I'm feeling like here that there is a really strong feeling here that you are making a decision to turn your back on something. And it could have something to do with money. Maybe you're involved in some sort of inheritance or some sort of settlement going on here and somebody is doing the wrong thing. They may be lying. They may be creating pain for you. But this Five of Swords says, although you don't want to leave them behind, you're going to. All right, let's see why. Okay, so we have the Lover's Card. Wow, with the temperance. And I say to people often, I nearly always get major arcanas on this second row for some reason. All right, Knight of Pentacles coming through. Um, I can't help thinking that I'm talking to some of you with a work situation. Um, you know, I'd say to you, you know, don't say anything, but I feel like especially in a work situation, sometimes you have to stand your ground. Sometimes you have to say, this isn't true. You're saying things that aren't true. But what we tend to do is we tend to sit back and think that, oh, you know, everything will go okay and we don't have to worry. It'll all clear itself up. But this temperance card with the lover's card tells me that you are taking a really different approach to things this time. Um, the Knight of Pentacles makes me feel that whatever approach you're taking here, it's very slow, well thought out, um, a well planned, well organized, whatever you'd like to say. So you're taking a very different approach. You know, sometimes we talk ourselves out of things and we keep the stress inside and we don't say anything. And then, of course, after a period of time, that starts to bubble up. And then the littlest thing is going to set you off because you're passive aggressive. And that's what passive aggression is when you don't speak up for yourself and you keep it boiled inside. Sometimes it's really hard to speak up for yourself. And when you're extremely uh, cagey and extremely passive, sometimes you can be seen as quite sort of out of the box when you do decide to say something. People will say, oh, what's wrong with her? What's going on for her? When in reality, you've probably just got to the end of your tether. And to me, this energy here with the lovers and the temperance card makes me feel that you are taking a completely different approach with this. You're thinking it out, you're making a decision, and I feel like whatever this is, you're going to stick with it. So if it means speaking up or saying something, you're going to do that here. All right, we have the Emperor coming out as well. All right, Four of Cups. So for some of you, it definitely feels, oh, with the Judgment card. Well, this energy in itself is a bit tacky. Um, Four of Cups really is that card of I don't want no more of this. Whatever you've been throwing at me, I'm not taking it anymore. I don't want, I don't like the look of it. It looks the same as what you've given me before. I don't want it. I feel like somebody's coming in here with a different approach. 
Um, I feel that you're being offered some sort of opportunity here to move forward on something that you're not sure about. Because I have the Emperor and the Empress in this reading, I do feel like for some of you with that Lover's card there, we may be talking romantic situation, maybe another opportunity to go around again. Um, it doesn't really have a strong feeling of that because I feel like you're taking a different approach here. I'm just going to put a few more cards on it. So let's see. I do have you coming out as the Empress. Whether you're male or female, this means that you're really on point with your intuition. You're ready to birth something new. Um, but your feminine qualities are highlighted. That doesn't mean that you are more feminine. It just means that the things that you would normally pay attention to, you're honing in on and leaving something behind here. Something that's created a lot of anxiety, and I feel with this Seven of Swords is probably not above board. Um, Seven of Swords, I don't always feel as that sort of creepy, sneaky card, but today that is creepy and sneaky. I feel like you're dealing with somebody here who's created a lot of stress in your life. Um, but again, it could be somebody that's romantic. It's just not a very romantic spread, I have to say. It feels more like, um, it, for me, it has a very strong feeling of work. Uh, but it may not be work. It could be that it's a situation uh, um, that where you're fighting over uh, resources or money. I don't think so. I think that possibly what we're talking about here is some sort of situation where somebody's become very unsettled by you, maybe jealous, put out. But there's something going around again for sure with that judgment card. So it's like you're being given an opportunity and maybe the rebirth here is coming from you standing up for yourself. Okay, so we have, look at that, the victory card. I'm not going to pull any more cards. I've got the tower after that, maybe I will. I wanted to have a look what it was in the two of swords. Okay, so I feel like here you do have a victory, but I feel again there is a choice here. Whatever you do, if you're standing up for yourself, speaking up for yourself and things are great, I feel like you have a choice here whether to walk away from somebody cut somebody out or move to the next move to the next level because i feel like here whoever this person is they could be a leo being we just had leo jumping out but i don't think this person has your best interests at heart and i think you know that now maybe you've ignored their bad behavior before but you're not going to do this anymore Oh, and there's it is. Okay. Oh, look at this. Work through your fears. New moon in Scorpio. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, let's have a look and see what it says here. This card suggests a rebirth. <laughs> Uh, think of your situation as the phoenix that's rising from the ashes as the birth, death, rebirth paradigm. That's what Scorpio energy is all about. Whatever you've been through, there's a new start ahead. It might be a little dark. It certainly won't be rainbows and unicorns, but it will be deep and transforming. This card also suggests that you know that you are magical. Then this is the time for you to work that magic. It can also herald the start of a sexier time. If you've been experiencing something of a drought, an emotional intimacy is also on the menu. Scorpio is a sign that likes to go deep into body, mind and spirit. So when this card comes up, there's nothing superficial about what's coming your way. Time to let go of a grudge you're holding. Move on from jealousy. Oh my goodness. Stop being obsessive. Um, make an investment, but have some sexy time. What an amazing card to get with the reading. All right, people, have a wonderful day. I will see you tomorrow.